Here is a nest of mound builder ants. Ants are one of the most interesting kinds of social insects. Each mound may have many different entrances. Ants returning to the mound find their way into the entrance that connects with the galleries and chambers where they do their share of the work of the nest. Some of them are bringing in food materials. These mound ants are dragging a caterpillar into the nest. Now they have the caterpillar almost pulled into the nest. Down it goes to feed the hungry horde. Inside the nest, there is an air of excitement. The mound ants are racing about. Something seems to be disturbing them. Outside, the mound ants are racing about. Something seems to be disturbing them. Outside, some of the mound ants are milling around, but most of them are leaving the nest. And here is the cause of the excitement. A battle is raging between two different kinds of ants. A nest of wood ants is battling the nest of mound ants. Some fight individual battles. But most of the warfare is between groups of ants. The ants use their legs and jaws as weapons. When the battle is over, the ants go back to their nests, back to their regular daily tasks. Under this stone is a nest of black ants. Here are the galleries and chambers in which these black ants work and live. The white objects the ants are moving are immature ants. All ants go through four stages of growth. Eggs, larvae, pupae, and adults. The white objects here are larvae. As an ant enters its nest, it comes into one of the many passageways or galleries that connect the different chambers. The ants use their jaws to move the larvae. The biggest ant in this scene is the queen of the colony. The other ants are workers. Here, the workers are caring for pupae. On this house, we find still another kind of ant. These are household ants. They hide their nest from view under the shingles of the house. Some of these ants are bringing food into the nest. All ants are social insects. They live and work together in groups called colonies. Here is a decayed log where a carpenter ant colony has its nest. Carpenter ants burrow passageways into the wood. Let's see how a nest like this is made and observe typical scenes of ant life. To begin with, a lone queen starts the new nest. She must do all of the work herself. This queen is tunneling in wood. Once the queen has finished her nest, she lays about 25 to 30 eggs. Soon the eggs begin developing into ants, the first generation of the new colony. The queen herself is the nurse for these first young ants. The tiny helpless creatures have no legs. They move by wriggling about. The queen gives them food which is stored in her own stomach. Once the first generation has developed, the queen has many helpers, known as workers. 
The nest is larger now. The workers have made new chambers and new passageways. The ants place their brood in chambers where they will be warm enough to develop into adult ants. With so many workers to help feed these larvae, they will develop into larger ants than those of the first generation. Here, a worker is feeding a larva. This larva is nearly full grown. The worker ant feeds the larva with food from its own stomach. The hungry larva grows rapidly. After several weeks, it will become a pupa. Now we will see a complete life cycle of the carpenter ant. This carpenter ant queen is laying tiny white eggs, which the workers carry away to chambers where they will be warm and protected. During the queen's lifetime of several years, she lays about 7,000 eggs. All of the eggs that she ever lays have been fertilized before she begins nesting. Here is a chamber filled with larvae and pupae. It takes about 10 days for eggs to develop into larvae. Here are some carpenter ant larvae. In about 50 days, the larvae are nearly full grown. The worker ants of the earlier generation relieved the queen of caring for these young larvae. Next, a larva spins a cocoon around itself, preparing to enter the pupa stage. Ants remain in the pupa stage for about 10 to 14 days. Adult ants will soon emerge from these cocoons. Nearby, workers are gathered about, assisting a young female to emerge from her cocoon. The workers pull away parts of the cocoon of the young female. Female ants are called queens only after they mate. Finally, the female emerges from her cocoon. In a few minutes, she will be dried off and able to move around the nest. In a carpenter ant colony, there are usually about 20 to 30 young females. As the colony grows, the ant nest must be enlarged to make room for its new members. Worker ants take over this duty, too. The sharp jaws of the workers cut away at the wood. Then the workers carry out the sawdust and bits of wood. Many of the carpenter ants are hunting food. This ant is attacking the pupa of a beetle, which will be added to the colony's food supply. Some of the workers stand guard to protect the nest from enemies. When an ant waves its feelers like this, it may mean that danger threatens the nest. But apparently there is no danger this time. Soon it will be swarming time. Usually this is in early summer. Then the young females and males of the colony will fly away. The workers remain behind. The females and the males fly away together on the mating flight. Moving from the lower right-hand corner to the center is a male. At the left is a female. The female is much larger than the male. Both females and males have wings. 
And so, like all the young female ants, this one prepares to fly away and mate. After the mating flight, the female loses her wings and becomes queen of a nest of her own, where a new cycle of ant life will begin all over again.